is is just to let you know that the, the groundswell is happening here. I mean, we, we have we have gathered so many people uh, in the last couple of weekends at the conventions that have jumped on board for you know with the Perry for Congress uh, campaign, and, and uh, so they've been very supportive. And, and again, I'm just so excited about what happened in Lesueur County here because that's that's brand new, and to be able to talk to those folks again and, and to, you know explain to them like I have over and over again. You know, Congressman Walls is just not right for the first congressional district. He's proven that over the last uh, five and a half years. He's not voting the way we want him to vote. And uh, when you're uh, a representative uh, country as we are, your representatives better do what, what the constituents say. And so um, we're moving forward. Our message is strong. It's, it, it resonates. Uh, people get it. It's the economy. It's uh, rules and regulations. Getting government off our backs, uh, releasing the handcuffs on, on the folks in agriculture and in business, so that they can do what they do best, and that's produce our fruit, food, not only for this country but for around the world. Uh, to release the handcuffs on the uh, on the uh, businesses, so that they can start employing more people, so that they have the confidence that they're not going to be inundated with things like Obamacare and and all these burdensome rules and regulations that that happen for one reason and one reason only. People like Congressman Walls has given up the authority that we the people have given to him. And they're letting others uh, do the rulemaking, make, make law. That's what the legislature, that's what Congress, that's what the U.S. Senate is all about. We make the laws as your representative, not somebody that works for us. So uh, we need to take that back. And that, that message is resonating very true when you're talking to some of the folks that, uh, like I say, that are growing the crops, the business people out there. Give us some breathing room. You know, just I'm going to switch back, uh, and, and Paul might, because I, I want Paul to say a few words too, but uh, switching back on the state side. That's why you're going to see coming up this next week a lot of bills to control the rulemaking in the state of Minnesota. We have to stop it. We have to take that authority back. And when we do that, we won't have, you know, like on the federal level, 80,000 pages a year of new rules. And I can't believe they even know what, what they're making rules about. They don't. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or, you know, or, or like Pelosi said, let's pass the bill and then we'll figure out what's in it, right? Then no, we, can't, we can't do that. The 2,500 pages. Right. Sign the bill and then read it. Yes, on. you know, uh, and I have met very, very few people that have read the bill, but those that have seem to be on our side because they're finding things that that are just outrageous. Our president's bill budget that he just unveiled last week had another one hundred and eleven billion dollars of money for Obamacare. You know, and and so. The rules and regulations that are coming out of Obamacare are so scary, and I, I've said it before. If you haven't read the book, Why Obamacare is Bad for America, you should find it and read it, because there's some things in there that, that will scare you. So we have to put a stop to that. And one way we're going to start is making sure that Congressman Walls does not go back to Washington. I'm sick and tired of the class warfare that is, is going on, not only in Washington, but you know, when you have Obama light as the governor of Minnesota trying to do the same executive <laughs> orders, you know, and that's that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to follow the president's lead. We cannot let that happen any longer. And that's why I say a good principal, backbone person to go to Washington, stand tall, not afraid of the union thugs and bullies. You know, that's the kind of person and that's the person I am. So. With that, I want Paul to say some words. Uh, this is new, isn't it? The, the, part of this is new for you, this area? <coughs> I think. Well, but, uh, <laughs> I want him to say a few words, and then, then I think we'll open it up to some questions, both on the state and the federal side. But uh, Paul, thanks for He, he found out that Brown County was a better county, so he's moving into Brown yeah. County. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. I really wasn't planning on speaking. I came to listen, but... Uh, but yeah, we put some earnest money down on a lake home yesterday, so uh, we will have a residence here in Brown County. I already represent all of Brown County today, thought, yeah. and if the voters so choose, I will continue to re represent Brown County in the future. So, 
So welcome to my new home county, my new old district, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> it, it feels good uh, to, uh, to represent Brown County. Um, and thank you for being here. I would just uh, say, you know, my theme kind of has become it's, it's time that governments start moving at the speed of business. Uh, it's just in so many cases, time after time, we run across situations where government is dragging its feet and preventing business from doing what it knows how to do best, and that's move forward with the economy of this state. We've had some good economic news recently. Uh, things are looking better in the state of Minnesota, and we're over -achieve, we're achieving better than uh, some other states in the union. Uh, I frankly give a lot of credit for that to our agriculture. I'm a farmer. Many of you know agriculture in this area. The farm economy is strong, and I think it's carrying the state of Minnesota right now. Now, that may not continue. Uh, we need to get the rest of our businesses also up to speed, and that means government needs to get out of the way. I could give you numerous examples. Uh, a couple that come to mind. One is uh, there's an issue in northern Minnesota where a mining company wants to really restart part of its mine that's been shut down. Somebody dug through some old standards, found an old sulfate standard from 40 years ago that hasn't been applied for 40 years, but they dug it up, and now they're using that standard, outdated standard, to stop this pro project. We're doing everything we can to try and move it ahead, but it's just about impossible because of the way the rules and regulations are written here in the state. We've got uh, dairy farms that are producing methane and want to burn methane, generate electricity burning methane. And the PCA is stopping them right now, saying, well, there might be air pollution. You know, they could, if they chose to just burn that methane off, they could do that without any problem. But because they're running it through an engine, all of a sudden it has to be tested. The PCA expects them to spend thousands more dollars on testing equipment just so they can run these engines. It's just, and I could go on and on, I'm not going to bore you with more details, but our state government needs to work hand in hand with the businesses in this state so that we can move forward and continue to grow this economy. Uh, I'm glad to see you all here today. I wish Mike the best. Uh, as you probably all know that know me, I'm a team player. Uh, whoever comes out of this endorsing process on our ticket, I will support to the best of my ability. So let's move forward and get let's get Tim Waltz back in the classroom and not a good teacher. Well so thanks Paul. I uh, appreciate that. So really this is this is becoming more and more of a listening kind of tour because you know, I want to be able to answer questions and, and hear from you. I think you all know where I stand on, on quite a bit. Uh, I've been around uh, <coughs> two, three, four times, and I'm going to continue to come uh, a, around and, and talk with folks. Uh, and the the offer is always open. If you have a gathering someplace, you're bringing people together, feel free to call because I'll do whatever I can to get get to uh, the event. And talk with the folks and meet the folks because that's what it's all about. We need to rally the base. We need to rally everyone together. We have to talk to the independents out there. We have to grab hold of those Reagan Democrats out there. We need all of them to come together. Those that have the common sense that uh, we seem to have lost in Washington. And as I've said uh, before to some other groups, as a state senator, before bills come to my committee, you know, they have to pass the Constitution test. They have to pass the common sense test before they're going to move forward. <coughs> so uh, I, I look at that the same way. Same thing's got to happen in Congress. We, we've got to work hard to make sure we get the right people there. So anybody got any questions or have you heard anything, um, you know, on the news of that that you might want to uh, discuss here today? Other than uh, you, the disgust of what's happening there? Do you have kind of a, a scenario in mind as yes, to if you do beat Walt? What? You mean when I beat Walt? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> what is your job going to look like if Obama is beat versus Obama? What is that? What are your. What are you going to what, do what, what about I, what the I want situations? I, okay. All right. Well, first and foremost, we're going to make sure that Tim Walls is beat. Okay, that's number one. That's awesome. and, and that's where all the energies are going. I, I can tell you that what I prided myself in as being your, uh, a state senator here in the state is the fact that as chairman of state government, I had a billion dollar budget that I dealt with. And in that billion dollar budget, I reduced it by about 11%. 
wanted 50, but I got 11 through the most liberal governor in the United States. 